Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Erica Wyatt and I'm the President and Judges Education Chair for the American Slugi Association, the AKC National Parent Club for the Slugi. The purpose of this Judges Education video is to discuss color and pigmentation in the breed and the disqualifications under the standard that relate to color. The Slugi's countries of origin are Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, and Libya. This is an arid geographical region that includes a large swath of the Sahara Desert. It is one of the driest and hottest regions in the world. Animals vulnerable to phototoxicity and photosensitivity would suffer in the conditions in which most slugies are kept. Color and pigment in the slugi are essential characteristics because they relate directly to the harsh environment in which the breed was developed. In very basic terms, the color of the coat, skin, and mucous membranes of dogs are created by melanin. Not only does melanin create the beautiful colors of the slugi, it helps to protect against the harmful effects of ultraviolet rays. The colors of the slugi are not complicated. However, descriptions of coat colors can be confusing. Lots of breed standards use different words to describe the same color. For example, what we call sand with black mask in the slugi is called fawn in other breeds. Same color, different labels. What we call black mantle in the slugi is very different from the color pattern called black mantle in the Great Dane. There are disqualifications in the breed based on color, and it is important to understand those as well. Let's start with what the allowable colors of the slugi are. The Slugi's underlying coat color is called sand. This can range from light cream to deep mahogany fawn. The Slugi can be brindle. The Slugi can have black markings, such as a black mask, black ears, and or a black tail. The Slugi can have what we call a black mantle. This is not the same as the black mantle and the Great Dane. It is the same color pattern that is commonly referred to in other breeds as black and tan or black and brindle. The slugi can have any combination of the above mentioned markings. In addition, the slugi can have what we call a dark overlay. In North Africa and in Europe, they call this color Chabonnet. In some other breeds, this color might be referred to as sabling. The darker overlay can be minimal or it can be heavy. A small white mark on the chest or small white marks on the toes are faults. White due to scars or aging is permitted. You will often see a slugi who is graying on its feet at the same time that it is graying in its face. The nose of the slugi is black. The lips are black or dark brown. The nails are black or pigmented. Disqualifications are color not in accordance with the standard, larger white markings, solid white extending above the toes, or white anywhere else on the dog except the forechest. Slugies with a majority of depigmented or white nails disqualify. Although blue slugies exist, it is a color disqualification. Chocolate is a disqualification. Dilute chocolate is a disqualification. Solid black is a disqualification. Excessive white on the chest or anywhere else on the body is a disqualification. This is also a disqualification. Even if this dog were to be considered very light sand, its nails are all white. Its nose is flesh colored. This is a disqualification under the standard. Even very light sand slugies should have excellent pigment in their noses, their eye rims, their lips, and their nails. 
Thank you for spending a few moments with us today to learn about the correct and the disqualifying colors in the slugi. And now we leave you with the many beautiful colors of this breed.